All right, we are lucky enough to have Bob Powell in the office from where? Boston today. Oh, because you go from one cold place to like an to even colder cool place. place. <laughs> exactly. All right. So our retirement columnist here at thestreet.com, the coolest thing you've been doing is to me is taking questions from people because people have serious questions, especially about the new tax law. And we started going over some of the popular ones, the ones that are coming up all the time. And the first one are the state and local tax deductions. Truth is, what the heck is happening with them? So, she says from a high tax state. Right. So I live in a high tax state right. too, Tracy. So the thing about is the new tax law limits now how much you can deduct on uh, in terms of uh, state taxes and local income taxes. So in the past there was it was unlimited, right? You could deduct if you were taking if you were itemizing your deductions, you could take as much in state taxes, right. property taxes Although as your total itemized were sometimes limited depending how much money you made at the end of the day, right? Just to caveat that. Correct. Right. right. So but now under the new tax law there's a cap of ten thousand dollars. So if you're paying if you are itemizing and you're above the standard deduction, right. you will which be capped at twenty four thousand. Which is twenty four thousand. So you know, it, in effect, it may not be you may not itemize anymore. Right. But if you do itemize, you're going to be capped at ten thousand dollars. Now the question that I've been getting from readers is they own a lot of properties. In some cases, they own a second vacation home. In other cases, they own investment property, and they want to know: is it per house, per state? Or, or does it matter if it's investment versus personal? And the answer is, it's capped at ten thousand for all personal property for your second vacation Regardless home. Regardless of where the homes are. Correct. Now, does that include real estate taxes? It does. It does, right? Yep. So, state, local, real estate cap at ten. Correct. So, <laughs> the good news is, if your second home is actually a uh, investment property that you rent out and that you only stay in, maybe say two weeks of the year. You obviously that's a business expense, so that those state the list of property taxes will be used as a business uh, expense. Or you were saying earlier, create it as a business property. So that's a, you know, and I would say consult your CPA, For your sure. tax accountant. But if you think that you want to sort of avoid this ten thousand dollar cap, see if you can convert your second home into a vacation property. I mean, it sounds like. A uh, uh, not a lot of uh, it sounds like a lot of money to some, but for people in states like ours, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, ten grand is nothing. Is nothing. It's sad. It's absolutely nothing. Right. All right. I don't know what they were thinking down there. Okay, but to, to ease people's minds, some things did not change. Right. Right. So there's a bunch of things that are status quo. Correct. So um, people want to know: Will their Social Security be if they're receiving Social Security? They want to know sure if it will be taxed, right? And there's no change to that. So whatever you're paying in the past, you'll pay in the future. Those rates stay the same. Um, RMDs, people who might be 70 and a half and older, taking required minimum distribution from their IRAs, no change there. Um, no change right now for the time being in terms of if you were able to deduct your medical expenses for. For this year, uh, uh, it stays at 7.5%, but in 2019, it goes up to 10%. So it has to be greater than 10% of your adjusted gross income. By 20... Eight, by 2019. Medical is so hard to begin with, right? Because it's 7.5% of your AGI, Correct. which is hard. It's really hard to get there. But if you had a medical a catastrophe of some sort, right? Right. God forbid. Right. And if you were in the hospital or, or you had to go into a nursing home or you needed home health aids or whatever it might be, so those expenses add up if you need them. They certainly do. So keep all your receipts if you happen to be in that situation. Okay, and a small business. We have like this gig economy. Everyone's an Uber driver. What's changing for them? So the good news is the Section 179 deduction, which allows you to sort of, in effect, deduct whatever you spent on equipment. So in the old days, you know, if you were a gig economy worker, you would deduct maybe your personal computer, your printer, right. uh, all that stuff. Now, if you want to buy a car, maybe talk to you again, talk to your accountant. <laughs> Always, right? Because the, they increased the limit like dramatically. Right. So now the the limit goes from five hundred thousand to five million dollars, and so in effect, you can almost deduct whatever you buy. It's, it's great. They've almost made it unlimited, which right. is really cool. Because at one point it was capped at a couple thousand. Correct. And you were like rushing under the gun to get your laptop in. Right. So the good news is, you know, and now that we are in a gig economy, yeah. people now will have the ability to sort of um, buy the things that they need to expand their business. And to get deductions for it. That's awesome. Correct. You're pretty awesome. Everybody's got to stay tuned for Bob's Retirement Center, which is coming up down the pike. Soon. April. And watch all out for all his columns. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks, Bob.